Tom, a.k.a. Gedeon here for Star Frontiers Gamer. And uh, we are interrupting our regularly scheduled video. Uh, not done filming that one anyways. And um, part of the interruption was um, taking somebody to a doctor's visit today. But also, I got sent to me this morning by I am Star Frontier's new Genesis lore that was published that dropped today or yesterday in the um, Johnson Publishing Group, Dave Films US, whatever the company's name is by now, right now. Um, their production, their fan magazine, Alarms uh, and Journeys, which is uh, it, you probably recognize as a squatting on the name of a very famous and well done magazine called Alarms and Excursions. So uh, anyhow, this is the um, Star Frontiers New Genesis lore. And what is important here is I have identified four areas, and there could be more. It was a tough read. Um, wow. It, 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 was, it was brutal reading this, absolutely. There's no editing. There's no editing but none of this. It's 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 outrageous. <clears throat> so uh, there are four points here that I can identify where the TSR, new TSR that's producing Star Frontiers New Genesis is very blatantly grabbing the, not the trademark, not the trademark name Star Frontiers. They're grabbing the IP. And they're very blatant about it. They're actually very blatant about it. Uh, so there are four items. Attention, Wizards of the Coast lawyers. And I apologize to Justin Lanassa. I'm not wearing the Wear Rat t-shirt. I know that's your pet name for me. Um, uh, but it was dirty. I was digging through the hamper, and I just couldn't locate it. So uh, I was going to wear that for this because I know I'm, I'm ratting you out. And it's so attention, Wizards of the Coast lawyers. You might want to see this. I know before the you guys go to court. So number one. is right here this statement the emergence of interstellar pangalactic mega corporations <laughs> allowed for more sharing of technology and increased risk and interstellar piracy uh, became commonplace and the ucps nate boy that just rolls off the tongue doesn't it uh ucps navy was born pangalactic megacorps became the bastion of organized crime Interstellar smuggling of people, drugs, and machines of war uh, is commonplace. <clears throat> so now you take this with another statement, and it, it becomes uh, obvious what they're doing is is no longer are they megacorps as you had in Star Frontiers. They are now pangalactic megacorps, which lets them co-opt the, the classic company name, from Star Frontiers, which is the Pangalactic Corporation, PGC. So they're turning Pangalactic Corporation into a class of megacorps. You know, any company that you know is is Pangalactic, meaning they, they span the galaxy, they span multiple star systems. So they've turned the whole um, name of the original Star Frontiers Megacorp, the company, um, the, you know, that's the prime one into a whole category uh, classification of corporations. So it's, it's uh, which lets them grab the whole name and use it. So that was number one, not that big a deal, but it was number one. It was, it was clearly a shot across the bow at uh, Star Frontiers. And then number two, number two is if you notice this uh, history and timeline of Star Frontiers, New Genesis year and epoch. Um, this doesn't make any sense, year and, and epoch. Uh, so anyhow, the year, 111. The last scraps of recorded history of the old civilizations. The last known celebration of the old ways. Now that's interesting. Right away, as a Star Frontiers fan, it reminds me of this. This right here is from Zebulon's Guide. It's the last entry in the Zebulon's Guide timeline. Frontier year, it's FY, Frontier year. Um, 
111, the grand celebration commemorating 111 years of the UPF Treaty is planned for the entire year. Gala, social functions, parades, celebrations are planned on every planet in the UPF and even some on, on the rim. So, so they're grabbing an actual point right out of the Star Frontiers timeline and using it. And clearly, you know, the last celebrations. Let's go back. Let's go back. Make sure I'm not misquoting. Um, the last scraps of recorded history. <laughs> Now, if you remember, there was a recent announcement um, from Dave Johnson, uh, the designer of Star Frontiers New Genesis, that that Star that the original Star Frontiers is dead, 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 dead. <laughs> and you know, and it was clearly that that statement was a shot across the bow at the Star Frontiers Alive and Well fan community on Facebook. Um, you know. It, it's a shot across the bow at the fan magazines, which will be keeping this game, helping, you know, pump hydrogen um, into the into the fire, pump oxygen into the fire, keeping the game alive and going so that there was a product worth stealing doing a trademark grab for the Star Frontier's name. So note it says last scraps of recorded history. That's the last Entry of recorded history in the original Star Frontiers game, year 111. Uh, they, they're leaving off Frontier Year. <laughs> there. They're not putting a uh, denominator in. They will later. They'll put CY for Common Year um, or Confederate Year, depending on how you want to look at it. So it's the last scraps of recorded history of the old civilizations, last known celebrations of the old ways. And let's just go down here to uh, Dark Air. 1,000 years go by. All memories of the old ways have been forgotten. So and now what old ways are they talking about? Well, they stated it up here, celebration of the old ways, the old game. And so now they want to let us know that uh, all memories of the old game have been forgotten. I'm here to tell you, Dave, they haven't been forgotten. There's still a fan magazine. There's still a fan community, and you were gravely mistaken. So that is item number two. They're grabbing from the timeline. They're grabbing the Megacorp, Pan Galactic Corporation. They're grabbing from the timeline right out of Zebulon's Guide. Let's go to item number three. It is right down here on the bottom. It actually starts here and then goes to the next page. What is left is the origins of our modern society with, and let's go to the next page, the rise of the eugenics movement. We suddenly have a eugenics movement. It'll explain, comma, the Yaz race. Who's the Yaz race? Would that be the... Yazarians of Star Frontiers? Would that not be IP belonging to Wizards of the Coast? The Yaz race, race interbred with another compatible race, unspecified who they are, <laughs> to form the Uriad. So we're just going to change the name of the Yaz race to the Uriad because, um, you know, evolution happens over such a short period of time apparently during this thousand years we evolved from one thing to another they're just taking they're just going you know what we're just going to take the yaz race we'll rename them and use them and how do we know that that's what they're doing because then we get the next entry here this little piece here this little piece here the draw race almost disappeared altogether the remaining what draws became the the Arlet race? We're just going to rename them. We're going to take the IP of Wizards of the Coast because we are a new TSR and we don't care. Uh, we don't. <laughs> this is how we roll. We're just and they're going to be the Darlet race. And uh, are, are we really sure? I mean, what's going on here? The Ver race. Ver, that would be short for Versk or Vrusk. Um, we just had a great 
debate over the pronunciation. I was doing it wrong in some videos. But we're here. We're gonna. I'm gonna say it the wrong way on purpose. The Versk race. There, because clearly he's doing the V E R Versk. The Ver, and he's dropping the S K uh, race evolved to become the Entomoids. <laughs> I hate that name. <laughs> The Entomate and their new empire. <laughs> the popularity of cyber, uh, cybernetics. And, and all right, so, so right away, we're going to drop the rest of this because this is this is grist for another time, uh, for the next video. So right here, the uh, three races along with the humans. Humans, you, I, I guess you can't copyright that. We we exist because we exist, right? Um, <clears throat> so the Three species, he keeps saying they're a race here. They're not really a race. We have <laughs> their species. Um, I guess there's a lot of races, a lot of racial tension going on, a lot of races. Right? No. <laughs> yeah. The species, Dave, it's species. The Yaz species, interbred with another compatible species. Of so he's grabbing the Yaz, the Draw, the Ver. In fact, these these uh, these words here, Yaz and Draw, these are very common abbreviations of the full name Yazarian Drawlocyte. Um, nobody says the Ver because their name is so short; it's versed. Uh, but they're just doing this to just try to skirt legality. Um, but they're making it very clear. They're grabbing the Star Frontiers species, the core four species, and using them anyways. We don't care. We're just going to use them. <clears throat> so that is item number three. Well, let's go to item number four. So the this paragraph right here, this is government results from work done by the four designers of the new constitution and charter. Um, hmm. A constitution and charter. I don't think the writer of this knows what a charter is. But anyhow, the now famous four, Samuel Buckus, Vern, Vernora Vinge, Uriah Heap, and Becky Sharp, are people who spearheaded the efforts. They also happen to be, some of them happen to be characters in literature, and some of them happen to be famous sci-fi novelist, Werner Vinge. Um, I don't know what he did to piss the writer off here to be made into a woman. Uh, I don't know. You know. Maybe he wants to identify differently. I don't know. But uh, yes, so these names are recognizable. Um, with the help, they did not do this alone either. With the help of O, oh, Zheng Li, Haoying, Saimok, uh, drafted the first legal statutes. The idea was strength in numbers and the motivation of all of this. Wow, that is a badly constructed sentence. The fall of the old UPF has long since happened and is forgotten. Yeah, like what, a thousand years ago, but ill explained. Anyhow. Um, and the probability of a second catastrophe is too great to take a chance. Well, if it's forgotten, why would you be worried about a second catastrophe? Because you would not remember the first. If it's forgotten, you would have no memory of it. It's a thousand years ago. So there should be no memory of it. You said there's no memory of it. it makes no sense. But clearly, they're grabbing the UPF to use as IP. In their game setting, this is their, it's being published, it's trademarked, you know, let me just go back and double check. Yeah, it was trademarked to TSR, copyrighted to TSR 2022, published in Alarms and Journeys magazine, published by Dave Johnson, Dave Films, US, whoever, whoever he says is the organization running it. I mean, she's... That's such a rabbit hole to dig into Dave Films. Anyhow, so attention, Wizards of the Coast lawyers. Four items I can identify of Star Frontier's IP being grabbed by new TSR to be used in their game. And uh, they're doing this without license. They're doing this without 
um, a license from Wizards of the Coast. They haven't purchased the IP. They, they have no right to it. And they're in a legal dispute over the trademark um, where they have been alleged a fraud. So this is just interesting that they would go here and do this. Um, I mean, just wow. Special thanks to my buddy who sent me a copy of this this morning. You made my day. It was the gift that just keeps on giving there. Man, that was freaking cool. I'm so, so happy to get it this morning, despite the headache. Um, so thanks for watching the video. Thanks to my subscribers. You guys are great. This is Tom for Star Frontiers Gamer, and I will see you on the frontier. Just not in the new Genesis frontier.